Hey everyone, welcome to Neuropod, a channel about all things Neuralink. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and in this update episode, we'll cover some tweets from Elon about costs to train a neural net, some clips on how Neuralink will help us uncover secrets about the brain, and another fun, thought-provoking tweet from Max Hodak, and then an article out of Brown claiming that researchers have demonstrated the first human use of high-bandwidth wireless brain-computer interface. First, one of the newest members of the ARK Invest team, Will Summerlin, specializes in artificial intelligence. He tweeted a thread giving some estimates for how much it costs to train a neural network the size of a human brain. In 2021, he suspects it costs more than $2 billion. Elon responded by saying, quote, It's not really possible to match the human brain in 2021 for any amount of money, in my opinion. But it will be possible probably in a few years, unquote. The first thing I took away from this was that Elon can say this probably because he's going to play a major role in making this happen. As the old adage goes, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Given Neuralink and Tesla's progress with artificial intelligence and neural network training, there are many outcomes that wouldn't surprise me as much as they might have just a few years ago. If Neuralink is able to read and write information from and to the brain, it's likely they'll unlock many secrets that we haven't learned of before. For example, deep brain stimulation surgery can often help patients with Parkinson's disease. However, it's not exactly clear which specific neurons are being affected. Elon once compared this to kicking a TV when he chat with Joe Rogan in 2020. He said, quote, Deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's has really changed people's lives in a big way, which is kind of remarkable because it kind of like zaps your brain. It's like kicking the TV type of thing. And you think like kicking the TV shouldn't work. There's deep brain stimulation implanted devices in the brain that have changed people's lives for the better, pretty fundamentally, unquote. Elon reiterated this during the Progress Update event in August. Here's a clip of him comparing deep brain stimulation to what Neuralink is aspiring to do. And in terms of what is currently available, uh, there is something called deep brain stimulation where they put electrodes, a small number of electrodes uh, in your brain and will actually uh, zap your brain with an electric current. Um, and it's, it's, it's valuable for its uses, but it can't read or write high bandwidth information. Um, I would say this is sort of a, a bit like sort of kicking the TV, which does work, uh, but not always, and it has limitations. Um, nonetheless, th this has greatly helped over 150,000 people, um, and it's, so it's, it's actually, just despite being somewhat of a brute force approach, it has been very effective for a lot of people. And this is what's currently available. So we want to radically improve this by multiple orders of magnitude, improve it by a factor of 100, then 1,000, then 10,000. I share these clips because they reinforce the fact that the brute force approach is not the approach that Neuralink is taking. Instead, Neuralink will make very high bandwidth interfaces that will not only read and write, but these implants will also teach us about the brain. Ian O'Hara, the director of robotics at Neuralink, shared this. I've actually been excited from the beginning sort of about the like side benefit of these devices. I sort of see them as uh, essentially like an oscilloscope to a uh, printed circuit board is our device to the brain, where just by virtue of having this in there and uh, being able to see what's actually going on, you'll end up learning a ton about how the brain works. Um, and so sort of augmenting people, but also just using that to learn a lot more about like neurological diseases is really exciting to me. This ties back to the secrets I mentioned earlier. I'm using the definition popularized by the former CEO of PayPal, Peter Thiel. In his book, Zero to One, he mentions the importance of uncovering secrets, which are truths that are hard, but possible to discover. The secrets land in the middle of conventions, which we understand, and mysteries, which no one can figure out. In this 2014 clip from a speech in London, Thiel discussed secrets and innovation. Notice how he cites many familiar industries for where there are still secrets left to uncover. I think we've seen less innovation in the world of atoms, um, uh, you know, transportation, um, energy, clean energy, biomedical, biotech, um, space travel, all the kinds of things people thought about in the 50s and 60s. But I think, it's, um, I think it's not because there's some law of nature that it's hard to innovate or impossible to innovate in these areas. It's just that there's sort of been this cultural change where we haven't tried as much. And, and we, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of, there's, there's a lot of this has a self-fulfilling character. If you, if you think that you can't find a secret 
then you're not going to try and you will not look and you will not be a person who ever finds one. I'm very excited for secrets about the brain that Neuralink will help reveal. After that, there will be plenty of opportunities for people to learn more, invent more, and live more. Now, going back to the tweet thread from Will at ARK Invest, the conversation continued with him saying, quote, Neural network training efficiency has been doubling every 16 months. If the trend continues, the cost of training will likely decline to around $5 million in 2032. Elon confirmed he agrees by responding, sounds about right. I've been considering creating an episode that walks through some estimates for Neuralink's future financial prospects. It's inevitable that the estimates are going to have tons of assumption errors, but I feel like it's a fun and moderately useful exercise to go through if there ever happens to be an opportunity to invest in Neuralink. If you want to see that, please comment your support for the idea below the video. Next, we have some tweets from the president of Neuralink, Max Hodak. He says, quote, We're going to need a better term than video game once we start programming for more of the sensorium, unquote. If the term audio references our ability to hear and video references our ability to hear and see, what's the term for when we can hear, see, and smell? Or hear, see, and touch? Next, we have an article out of Brown University with the headline that says, Researchers demonstrate first human use of high bandwidth wireless brain computer interface. The article references BrainGate clinical trial participants who are 35 and 63 year old men. For many years, BrainGate was working on brain computer interfaces prior to Neuralink, and now it seems like they may be helping each other advance the industry forward. The main highlight I took away from the article was this sentence. It says, quote, in the current study, two devices used together recorded neural signals at 48 megabits per second from 200 electrodes with a battery life of over 36 hours, unquote. By contrast, in the initial 2019 Neuralink launch event, DJ Sa, the director of Implant Systems, discussed a wired connection of 200 megabits per second. Our analog pixel can capture the entire neural signals sampled at 20,000 samples per second with 10 bits of resolution resulting in over 200 megabits per second of neural data for each 1,024 channels that we, uh, that we record. Also keep in mind, at the latest update event, Neuralink shared that there are 1,024 electrodes per link device. This should just serve as a reminder that Elon and the Neuralink team constantly strive to be the absolute best. It's not like they just want to be better than the best. They're truly striving to constantly be an order of magnitude better than any widely available state-of-the-art technology. So whether the BrainGate team is collaborating with Neuralink a little or a lot, it's great to see that their team has demonstrated fairly high bandwidth wireless interfaces are possible. But I'll be curious to learn more about the ways they're working alongside Neuralink. You may have seen the initial uh, disclosure side that uh, Mass General has a clinical research support agreement with uh, three companies that are, rele that are uh, relevant uh, in this space, if not more, uh, which includes Neuralink, as you just mentioned, Paradromics and Synchron. The, uh, so I'm uh, very fortunate to have the opportunity to interact with them every so often through the hospital because what we're learning in our BrainGate research, I, I want them to know. I hope to share a little bit more info about BrainGate and the leadership team in future episodes. Now, I think this tweet Elon replied to is pretty funny, particularly because it really does feel like it'll take a long time until machines can have feelings in the way that humans can. Will humans ever be able to recreate consciousness? Maybe Neuralink will get us to that point. Just some food for thought. Thanks again for watching, and shout out to the channel members and Patreon supporting the channel. If you're interested, please click the join button below the video. I truly appreciate your support, and it helps us not only grow in the short term, but also have greater confidence that we have the backing of an audience to make investments into improving the channel. Thanks again, and hope you join us again for the next episode.